Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large came out last week, published by Stability AI. This refers to the time when I record this video. Depending on when you watch it, it may be a little longer. But I want to show you in this video what I have already learned and seen from SD 3.5. And with that, welcome to this video, in which I want to exchange some lifetime for knowledge. So, how do we find a very good entry here? First, let's have a look at comfy.org. This is the official Comfy UI page. Here we can look in the blog area and here we can already see Comfy UI now supports Stable Diffusion 3.5. Let's leave the picture outside. It really didn't turn out very nice. I don't know why they took it. But here we have a good collection, which we will need. Just go to the blog entry, there you can find everything. You can download the download link for Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large for Large Turbo. By the way, I haven't looked at Turbo yet. We can download the text encoder Clip G, Clip L, and the T5FP16 if you don't already have it. Flux also needs it. But there are also the smaller models. There is Stable Diffusion 3.5 in an FP8 variant. They are here, FP8 scaled model, you can download it here. And there is also the T5 text encoder in FP8 versions. This will help you if you have problems with your VRAM. These are a bit smaller models, it is also a bit faster. In this video I will also use the FP8 version, but it works just as well as the FP16 version. So no problem at all. So, let's take a look at a workflow that will be suggested here. I have already downloaded it. I open it. No not create new. Open it once. This is this one. Let's take a look at it. But I won't use it right away. We take the one from Hugging Face, I'll show you that too. But here are a few tips hidden in the notes that you can read through. It's an example workflow that works just as well. But I want to take the other one to show you something else. In principle, nothing special. You can use different clip variants. Otherwise, everything is built up in such a way that it already works. Just select your models. If you have a subfolder like me, I have the whole thing again in SD3 and then large, for example, you just have to select it. But we go to the Stability AI Hugging Face account. Stability AI Hugging Face. Here we can already see Stable Diffusion 3.5 large and I have taken the workflow that is here under Files and Versions. Stable Diffusion 3.5 L example workflow.json. We'll take a look at that now. I'll just load it. That's this one. It's built up somehow a little more interesting. It is very broad, yes, but also just as simple, if not even a bit simpler than the other one. Because we have this triple clip loader here, not the variance for switching between dual and single clip. And especially down here, the area I found very interesting. So, first of all, here we also have a small note. Here it says, make sure the resolution is multiple of 64 pixels and adds up to around 1 megapixel. Don't take it too seriously. Here the multiple of 64, stick to the 1 megapixel, because then you are actually in the field of SDXL resolutions. They are also 1 megapixel, 1024 by 1024 gives you a little more than 1 million pixels, then that's fine. The 64 is not that dramatic now. So, I'll start to rebuild a bit. I'm actually lazy, that's why I say here, I want to store width and height and take CRSDXL aspect ratio, that comes from the comfy roll, nodes. Because then I can easily take a portrait resolution that fits on SDXL, 1 million pixels, for example. And then we don't have to change the rules here, we can just choose here very conveniently. I'll set the rest of the sampler again. I just take seed 0, say fixed, and here we can take a look at it. CFG is generally quite low at SD 3.5. The sweet spot is between 3 and 6 CFG. 4.5 is quite good if you want to have that a little closer to the prompt, it goes down a bit and so on. Try around there as you want. We'll just go with 4.5. Steps 40 is relatively high. I have seen that there are also clear differences when you take 20, 30 or 40 steps. 
We'll stay with 40 steps now, but you can also try around there. In my first testings I saw that 40 steps is not necessarily better. It was an example where I had a picture generated where a brick wall could be seen in the background. And with 20 steps the brick wall came out somehow better than with 40. But with 40 the picture quality and the details rise a bit. We leave samplers to DPMPP2M. I haven't gone through all the samplers yet. We can all try that out together somehow. With the schedulers I noticed that normal works, SJM uniform, simple, datum uniform, beta and linear quadratic. But with linear quadratic a crux was added, we'll come back to that later. The pictures with linear quadratic are also quite different from the others. We'll just stay with the standard setup and look further at this workflow. Down here, what does that mean now? We see that this is connected to the negative prompting. There we have a conditioning zero out, then a time step range, another time step range, both come out of the negative here. Then a conditioning combine again and the whole thing goes into the negative. This is because SD 3.5 doesn't like negatives very much. But as before with SD 3 we can trick a bit and that was done here too. The whole thing just says that we use the negative conditioning, which comes over the string here, only for the first 10% of the image generation. From 0.0, .0 to 0 0.1 our negatives are used. After that, from 0.1 to 1.0, the conditioning is emptied, and the whole thing is then combined and leads to the first 10% of the image generation. So for the first four steps in this case, a negative conditioning is included, but not after that. But that makes a difference. I don't know if we will come to that in the course of the video. However, you can use something like bokeh here. That was a little crux with flux. Enter bokeh, then the bokeh share in the image really decreases significantly. Or if you want to, break down different levels because the training or something like that kicks in a bit too harsh, then you can do that with it. But we can also simplify the whole thing. I don't know what to say now. Simplify. And there are in the essentials SD3 negative conditioning. And we can just hang them over here and we can save all this mess here and in principle they do exactly the same. The negative conditioning is only used for the first 10%. So let's do a little bit here, a little bit higher, a little bit more compressed. So, I will definitely need a safe image node. SD35 rec, so that I can save the pictures away. But I'll hang them a little further down here, so that they don't hang us up here. It's actually only later for my thumbnails and so on. Yes, we can select checkpoint up here, we can also make that a little smaller. As I said, I take the FPA checkpoint for this time. It's a little smaller, down here we have the clips and here I also take the T5 FP8. That saves a little bit of frame and makes it a little faster. There are differences between the FP16 version and the FP8 version. However, according to my observations, they have limited themselves a bit to the background. There was once a lamp instead of an octagon, then it was somehow round or something. So nothing dramatic. Up here we have a shift in the model, which is set to 3 as standard. I would leave that as it is. Then we can gradually touch the edge and try it out. But for now, for the first entry, that's enough. So I would say let's generate a picture. I take the same prompts that I had in my Flux video for comparison. First of all, let's take cyberpunk boom in Tokyo, like city, everywhere is neon lighting, raining. You can read. I even leave the flux here. We take exactly the same prompt, even if there is of course an SD 3.5. Although no, I get a problem with the thumbnails. I have to write SD 3.5 in there. And then let's run the whole thing. IAA. Yes, patch. Of course we also have to. I just updated the T5. Clip L and clip G, of course.
so now it's run through. We'll take a look at it. And prompt adhesion is okay, I would say. So I just pull our positive prompt next to it. So let's see. Cyberpunk, yes. Tokyo, like city, can be. Neon lighting, definitely. Brown leather coat is there. Short black trousers, yes. Green shirt with SD 3.5, yes. And blue fishnet, partly. But pink hair, he did it. But what you can also see is that, of course, the SD 3.5 has bled a bit up here. And that, I guess, the short of black trousers has also bled on the shirt. So I push it back again. I haven't got it done with long shirt yet, but you can control it quite well with prompting. I'll take another example, and that with the cat. Here we have it. The cat stands in front of a store with a latent place sign, and also has a shield with SD 3.5 in his hand. Futuristic spacesuit, sci-fi environment, made in the Disney or Pixar style. I let it run again. So here it worked quite well. We have the latent place sign up here. We have SD 3.5 as a shield. Here it is a bit overlapped. It has a bit of a hallucination. Back here with the leg. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. There's also a bit of seed luck in there. I've already discovered that. We have a spacesuit and we have a cute cat. What we don't quite have is the Disney or Pixar style. Maybe you can tear it up a bit with when you say something like 3D rendered animation movie style or something. I don't know if such trade names have been trained. But also more about that at the end. So when we get to the end of the video, we'll talk about it again. Nevertheless, the prompto adhesion worked quite well. Especially with the letters and the fonts. I found in my tests, if I specify a batch size of 4 or so, that it worked with at least 50% of the generated images. With the others it was a bit. Then there may be a few outliers. But 50-75% to of 4 generated images were usually appropriate. While 1-2 to two didn't quite stick to the prompt. Let's put it this way. Where SD 3.5 is really good is with styles. I have prepared a prompt here again. I'll show you that in a moment. Let's make it a bit bigger. A watercolor painting of a female assassin with a black cloak and a hood. Background is plain white, while the drawing itself is splattering over the canvas. With the handwriting and a little description of what I want to have here. In general, the prompting works pretty well if you describe foreground and background. But then not necessarily in dimensions like Tolstoy or Shakespeare would do. So by LLM or something like that. But it is enough if it is already detailed, but not too exuberant. SD 3.5 works pretty well there. So watercolor painting, because we get styles pretty well with SD 3.5 large. I'll let it run. And there we got a very nice result. We have our watercolor painting with the assassin. Black cloak with hoodie. We have the handwriting. We have the splattering of the watercolors here on the pages. SD 3.5 is really, really good in there. It also works with other styles. Oil painting and something like that. That's very, very nice. So next I'll show you the upscaling. And then we actually have a little weak point. We just go in. So watch out, I'll copy this here. So. And I say now, I just want to upscale the picture. Let's take this from here. And oops, that doesn't work, of course. VAE encode. In here. Now we can actually go back here. I was thinking about doing a reroute, but we won't take it. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but whatever. So 1440 in height. And of course we have to go down here with the denoise. I'll take 0 0.35. And back here we also make a preview image. Oops. So. 
if I let that run for now. Then we can see that the upscaling will be really, really ugly. This is due to the fact that SD35 is going out of its comfort zone with the 1 megapixel size. That's really, really not nice. It's being crumpled, it's being washed away. Well, the white background saves a lot here, but here in the middle we see something. And down here, too, with the font, it just doesn't look nice anymore. That's why we have to go through a tiling process when upscaling. And I'll show you that quickly. I'll make some space here. We first take an upscale using model. Make a load model. And take my Remacri upscaler. We hang the picture in here. We then scale it down to our desired size. Then take the image part from the essentials. Hang the picture in there. And from here it goes into the VAE encode. Now we can add an overlap here. That means that we will later overblend the parts that we generate, so that we don't have any hard edges. But then also take an image part from the essentials back here. Hang that in here. And from there our preview image. And then we have to pull out the overlap here. And connect from back here. So, and what we have now, I'll let it run. So, let's take a look at the whole thing again. And we see that it worked flawlessly now. Oh, now a little bled in. But for the upscaling, we have to go into a tiling here. Of course, we have four individual pictures here, which are sent as a batch to the sampler. If you have problems with this method, to go into a memory overflow, boom. Then you can do the following. Say batch to list. This is also in the essentials. Hang this node in between here. So between VAE and code and image tile. And back here again list to batch. This is also included here. It comes back here at the end. Come on. So. And then you have no more batches, but a list. And the elements in a list are processed one after the other. So a batch is processed in one denoising pass. While a list holds. Then you would have four times here that the sampler goes through. I forgot a little tip now. Change the seed here. You should not have the same seed here when upscaling as before. Didn't hurt much now. Although maybe it did. Maybe that's why the bleeding came about here. But just as a tip, just do it like that and you're safe. Back to the linear quadratic. It somehow doesn't work with upscaling. I saw. I found it very interesting. Has provided very strange results. I don't know why. It looked a bit like that. I can show you an example. What I did with the. I think it was normal. Upscaled. With the normal scheduler. And on the other hand, the same picture, only with the linear quadratic. And it looked like it might be the prompt, for the parts a bit too much. That's why I like to try it out. Tell me if you have the same experiences. I found it very strange, so normal, SGM uniform, simple, DDM uniform, beta, linear quadratic worked. The linear quadratic somehow didn't work, to upscale. No idea why. Well, let's throw that all away again. Here, let's clean up a bit again and go back to our standard workflow. Image to image is actually no problem. I'll take a load image node and styles. This here. We save VAE in code. We need them up here again. We just take a classic image to image workflow. Down here, so that we are in the 1 megapixel area, we can say we take resolution by aspect ratio. It is coming from my node collection. We switch this here to SDXL. Say then, we want to resize it once from the essentials. Take width and height out of here. 
connect width and height, here width, and our original picture width. And then we can put the picture up here, throw in. Here maybe select Langsos, and here at fill crop. Then we are back in the SDXL variants. And if I say here for example, wait a minute, I'll scroll down so that you can read that. Oil painting of a woman sitting in a cafe in France and drinking. Milk. On a summer's day. So, if I let this run now, stop. One or the other will have already screened. Of course we have to go down here with the denoise, but I noticed that a slightly higher denoise is quite acceptable here. I'm a bit in the blind flight now. On the way here, I'll let it run. And we'll just look at the result. So, we now get such a picture here. Also very nice. And here you can also see that the different styles are also very well taken over by Stable Diffusion 3.5. Why is there still a glass here? Where is your companion? I do not know, but also very nice. Finally, we can say, Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large is a very nice base model. And we have to take that into account. It's a base model. It's like 1.5 and SDXL. The base is to do more with it. In other words, the fine tunes will come now. There are also LORAS. It is being trained diligently. There will certainly be an IP adapter for it, and that's the difference to Flux. I know we have a Flux IP adapter and LORAS can be trained, but Flux is not a base model. So what we have, the Flux diff, it is already a fine-tuned or distilled version of a large model, and that is not the case here. If we think about what has become of 1.5 and SDXL, then we can expect great things here. So I hope so. It is very nice from the base. It is balanced. It covers many areas. Also many styles and so on. It also has weaknesses. Yes, but you can probably eliminate them with fine tuning. So, for example, there would be faces. There are sometimes a bit too blatantly divided on realism. So you actually try to get a painting. But the face still looks very much like a photo. Anatomy is also rather bad here. So hands holding the objects or something. I think there are close-ups of hands and extremities. But if there are objects in the game that hold these hands or something, then it will also be quite catastrophic. I hope the fine tunings can also support that. And what has already been discovered by one or the other, the model is not censored. So it already shows. Yes, how could I say that it is still safe? It shows larger skin colored areas without any problems. So, I hope you know what I mean. It is a nice base model. Do not forget that. It is a base model where fine tunings still have to come out. LORAS, control nets, IPAs, etc. And from then on, we will have a lot of fun with it. And it is not quite as big as Flux. Yes, please also share your insights with me. I hope I could help one or the other here. Have fun playing around and experimenting. See you in the next video. Until then, take care and ciao.